Home Team Heroes, presented by Sobeys, Canada's family grocery store. I think about how I grew up and how people treated me in the town, which is probably coincides with how I hope that I treat people. It was warm, welcoming. We had a ton of fun. You say a word and your insides tell you something about how you felt. And I have nothing but good feelings about Prince George. Stammer's taking the drop, but you're playing center. Quite literally, John Cooper has come a long way from where he started. Today, he's a two-time Stanley Cup champion and has become synonymous with a golden era for the Tampa Bay Lightning. But Cooper can still trace his success back to his hometown. At 14 years old, Cooper was a defenseman for the Prince George Chieftain Auto Parts Bantam Kings. It was also where he met three mentors who would leave a lasting impression. Doug Waterhouse, Bob Metcalf, Rick DeGans, and probably three coaches that you know started kind of tailoring maybe some of the things that I do in my coaching career. John was very magnetic. Every kid on the team wanted to be John's best buddy and, and be with John and hang around John. And John was one of those players that just showed up to practice with a great big smile plastered on his face. And he just worked and worked and worked and worked. And the same in the games. For a little guy, he wasn't very big, but he played tough. He played a lot bigger than his size. We had him as a defenseman and just because he was like a little bulldog, he was a decent hockey player, not the most talented one we had, but he was versatile. We had him play defense, and then the odd time he was up playing forward and stuff like that, and he always gave you 110% on the ice. Liner! Gordo, Gordo! I asked my dad many years later, it's like when I played, you know, in that rep team in, in Prince George, like, how do you describe me if I wasn't your son? And he said, you always gave an honest effort. You never cheated the game and you tried hard. And I took that as, it's like, thanks, Dad. But he never s said, like, I filled the net or <laughs> I did any of that. I was kind of hoping, like, didn't I score more? But I guess I didn't. In a year of fond memories, it was a three-week road trip to California that became a defining experience for everyone. We had a motorhome, a van, and a, an old pickup truck for the equipment down there. So we're screaming around the state of California with 18 kids and 12 parents coaches. It was the Brady Bunch right out of the airport. It was just hilarious. The kids had a blast. Well, I think the first thing was we were going to have fun. We wanted to beat the other team in town. That was the goal. We always had that carrot in front of us to, to chase. And we were going to have fun doing it, but we were going to work hard as well. What a great trip. I think about it now, the planning that must have taken place and the parents that had to step up and take us and look after us. We billeted with families, like the organization that must have I've taken. What an experience, you know, at such a young age to, to be able to do that, and uh, it was a ton of fun. The following year, Cooper would leave Prince George, off to pursue his hockey dreams at boarding school in Saskatchewan. But remarkably, 40 years later, the Lightning coach and his former coaches have kept in touch. Cooper still follows their example, sometimes at his own expense. We got first team. Recently, he got ejected from a game. And I sent him a, a little quick text and I said, kid, you reminded me of me in the day. <laughs> he said, not my proudest moment, but it sure felt good at the time. In between our two rinks, there's a big long wall up on top with a bunch of pictures of players and stuff. John's pictures up there amongst all these other hockey players and he's the only coach up there. So it's pretty cool when I'm in there looking at it and then somebody's there and says, I coached him. I think the three of us take a lot of pride in him achieving what he's achieved. Not many coaches get to do what he's done. He's successful and he'll continue to be successful. And then when he decides he doesn't want to coach anymore, the next step in his life will be successful as well. The only thing that's different between this team and the Bantam team I played on is the paycheck. The players are the same, the mentality is the same. They all want to win. They all want to get better. They all want to be pushed. They all want to be coached. That's it. It's no different. And at heart, those 14-year-olds pull the same pranks, have the same passion, are the same kids at heart than the 30-year-olds in the locker room now.